Hello friends, I am Dr. Nagaraj from Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. In this video, we shall see what is paper chromatography, its principle, types, applications, how to do it and what is RF value, what are the factors affecting the RF value and what precautions to be taken all these things we shall learn before that we shall see what is chromatography chromatography is a laboratory technique for the separation of mixture the mixture is dissolved in a fluid called the mobile phase which carries it through a fixed material called the stationary phase the different constituents of the mixture have different affinities for the stationary phase. The different molecules stay longer or shorter on the stationary phase depending on the interaction with its stationary phase. So they travel at different apparent velocities in the mobile fluid causing them to separate. Thus the separation is based on the differential partitioning between the mobile and the stationary phase. There are different types of chromatography. By altering the mobile phase, the stationary phase and or the factor determining the speed of travel, a wide variety of chromatographic methods have been created, each serving a different purpose and ideal for different mixtures. Some of the most common forms of chromatography are column, iron exchange, gel permeation, affinity, paper, thin layer, gas and dye ligand chromatography. Now let us see what is paper chromatography. It is a technique of separating dissolved chemical substances by taking advantage of their different rates of migration across sheet of chromatographic paper. It is an inexpensive but powerful analytical tool that requires very small quantities of materials. Now let us understand the principle of paper chromatography. The principle of separation is mainly partition rather than adsorption. Substances are distributed between a stationary phase and mobile phase. Cellulose layers in filter paper contain moisture which acts as stationary phase. Organic solvents or buffers are used as a mobile phase. The developing solution travels up the stationary phase carrying the sample with it. Components of the sample will separate readily according to how strongly they adsorb onto the stationary phase versus how readily they dissolve in the mobile phase. There are different types of paper chromatography. First, descending chromatography. Here, solvent travel down the paper. Second, ascending chromatography. Here, solvent travel up the paper. Third, ascending and descending chromatography. It is the hybrid of above two techniques. Fourth, radial or circular paper chromatography. Here, solvent travel radially. The fifth one is two dimensional chromatography. It is done in a square or rectangular paper. The second development is performed with different solvent at right angle to the direction of the first run. If you see the applications of paper chromatography, it is used for separation of mixture of amino acids, peptides, carbohydrates, steroids, purines, simple organic compounds, inorganic ions and polar and non-polar compounds. It is also used to determine organic compounds, biochemicals in urine. In the pharma sector, it is used for the determination of 
hormones and drugs and to check the purity of pharmaceuticals for detection of other trends in food and drink in forensics it is used to identify dna from fingerprint now we shall see what are the materials required we need whatman number 1 chromatographic paper amino acid kit embryo cups solvent butanol acetic acid water ninhydrin solution 70% alcohol beaker funnel petri dish capillary tube sprayer specimen jar boiling tube hair dryer stationary item and chromatographic chamber now let us learn how to do paper chromatography using descending paper chromatography in an embryo cup dissolve little amount of standard amino acid in 70% alcohol Take a chromatographic paper strip. Using a pencil, write the name of the amino acid or the number. Draw a line on the paper at a suitable distance, approximately five centimeter from one end. in order to protect from saliva or other dust this is to be covered with clean white sheet using capillary tube load 4 to 6 drops of sample on the center of the line it is to be noted that the spot should be at the most 5 mm in diameter after each time of loading dry the spot using hair dryer similarly load all the 24 amino acid in separate paper strips we can study the amino acids in different samples like body fluid plant or animal tissue extract etc here i have taken egg albumin flakes grind it with 70% alcohol and use the supernatant to load on the paper strips staple two strips together at the loaded end and place it on a clean reservoir of the chromatographic chamber and place a glass rod over that to prevent evaporation of solvent from the paper and for uniform flow saturate the chamber with solvent fumes and close the lid pour solvent into the reservoir through the hole on the lid
and close it. Develop the Kuranta gram for 3 to 5 hours. Ensure the availability of sufficient solvent in the reservoir during the development. After development, take out the strips and immediately mark the position of the solvent front. Then dry it for few minutes by keeping it in an oven or using hair dryer. After drying, spray ninhydrin solution on the strips. And dry them in hot air oven or with hair dryer for 5 to 10 minutes. You can see amino acid spots appear as blue color because of the action of ninhydrin. Using pencil, mark the most concentrated area or spot and also mark the center point of it. Measure the distance traveled by the solvent and substance that is amino acid from the spotting line. Then calculate the RF value by dividing the distance traveled by the substance by distance traveled by the solvent. Calculate the RF value of standard amino acids and tabulate the result. Similarly, calculate the RF value of unknown amino acids and compare or match it with the standard table and identify the unknown amino acids. Discuss your findings. There are different factors influence the RF values. For example, the solvent use, the pH of the solvent, distance through which the solvent have moved type and quality of the water use, direction of the fibers of the paper, method of development, distance through which the spots travel, concentrations of the separated substance, method of drying and locating the substances, the impurities present on the surface of the paper, irreversible adsorption on paper, chemical reactions between substances and the paper. We have to take some precautions like keep the hands clean during the procedure, cover the paper strip with clean paper while loading the sample. Do not contaminate the paper or sample. There should be sufficient amount of solvent in the reservoir. Large temperature variations are to be avoided. Paper should be freely suspended in the chamber. Next, let us see the ascending and circular paper chromatography. These two are ascending chromatography. This is done in specimen jar and this is done in boiling test tube. This is circular chromatography kept on a petri dish and covered with glass bowl to avoid evaporation of solvent. We shall summarize now. Evaluate yourself. I hope you would have understood the technique and enjoyed learning. Thank you.
इफ यू लाइक प्लीज शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब